Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over section 6.3, which is applications of linear equations. So in the last two sections, we learned how to evaluate uh, and simplify uh, expressions. Now we're going to actually solve these equations and uh, with word problems. So, um, the strategy for solving word problems is generally read the problem carefully several times until you can understand what you're doing. Uh, the main thing, though, is you let x, uh, or any variable you want to choose, represent one of the quantities in the problems. Generally, that would be the answer in the problem. If necessary, write expressions for any other unknown quantities in the problems of terms of x. So we're going to write an expression in terms of x, then an equation in terms of x, and solve the equation, and then we'll check the solution. So here are some traditional phrases that you'll see if we use the word sum, we mean addition, more than, increase by. Subtraction will have minus or difference or less than. Multiplications is times, product, percent, multiplied twice, three times. Division is divided by a quotient reciprocal. So feel free to pause this slide and take notes if you want. So the, graph below, the bar graph below shows the 10 most popular college majors with median uh, starting salaries. For recent college graduates, median is the middle salary. So you can see that like computer science has a pretty, is the highest, nursing is the next highest, and so on. So here's the problem. It says the median starting, the median starting salary, so we're not totally using the graph to answer this question. It was just a kind of informative graph. The median starting salary of a business major exceeds that of a psychology major by 8,000. The median starting salary for an English, English major exceeds that of a psychology major by 3,000. And combined, their median, start, median starting salaries are 116,000. Determine the median starting salaries of each major. And uh, so the big thing here is which one to choose as X as the variable. Well, they're all, all these are comparing to psychology majors. All these sentences compare to psychology majors. So whenever you compare to something, it's good to call that the variable. So we're going to let X, um, you know, they're showing here that they're comparing two psychology ma majors. So if we let X equal the mean starting salary of psychology majors, then this statement that says business majors earn 8,000 more than psychology majors would just be 8X plus 8. And these are all in terms of 1,000. So we're just writing, instead of 8,000, we're just writing x plus 8. And it says English majors earn 3,000 more than psychology majors, which is x plus 3. Well, this, the equation that, that we get, it says combined, which means sum. Their median starting salaries are 116,000. So if we take the sum of x, x plus 8, and x plus 3, we get 116,000. Then we just need to solve for the equation. Now remember, x represents the psychology major income. So if we add these together, we'll get three X's, so three X, and then eight um, plus three is 11. So we'll get three X plus 11, so all we did was simplify there, and now we're isolating for X, so we're subtracting 11. So 116 minus 11 is 105, and if you divide by three, that gives you X equals 35. So that would represent, remember, what does X represent? It remember, represents the psychology major's income. So we need to figure out the other two majors. Business major is 8,000 more than that, so that would be 43,000. And English major is 3,000 more than that, so if we add three, it's 38,000. So if we check these proposed solutions and the wording, the solution checks. Because 35 plus 43 plus 38, if you add those three numbers, you get 116. Next one, it says, you're choosing between two texting plans. Plan A has a monthly fee of $20, or $20 with a charge of $0.05 cents per text. Plan B has a monthly fee of $5 with a charge of $0.10 cents per text. Both plans include photo and video text. For how, how many text messages will the cost of the two plans be the same? So it says, for how many text messages will the cost of the two plans be the same? So that's what we'll let X be, the number of text messages. Then we uh, want to start building up an equation or an expression. So the monthly cost for plan A is, is the monthly fee, flat fee of 20, plus the te per text charge fee of 5 cents. And if you want to know the, how much it costs for text, you just take the 5 cents times the number of text messages. 
Same thing for plan B, you do the 5 plus the flat fee of 5 plus the 10 cents times the number of text messages. So that gives us these two equations, the $20 flat fee plus, that's an error there, let me fix that too. Here we go, got it fixed. So we have 20 plus five, $20 plus 5 cents for each text. We want to know when that's equal to the $5 flat fee plus 10 cents for each text. So the first step that we did here was to, to move the x um, to the same side. So if we subtract the 0.05x and move it over to this side, 0.05, so 0.10, excuse me, minus 0.05 is 0.05, and uh, the, the x is the coefficient there. So the, the step from here to here is subtracting the 0.05 from the 0.10. So it's essentially 10 cents minus 5 cents gives us 5 cents times x. All right, then the next step is to subtract the 5 over here so we can get the number on one side. So 20 minus 5 is 15. Then we divide both sides by 0.05 and we get 300 text messages. Because x represents the number of text messages uh, where the two plans will cost the same, the cost will be the same for 300 texts per month. If you want to double check the cost, let's just plug it in. So 5 cents times 300 is $15. 20 plus $15 gives us a total cost of $35. 5 plus 10 cents times 300. 10 cents times 300 is $30. Gives us $35 for that plan. So basically under these plans, if you know you're going to be spending, uh, or if you're going to be using more than 300 texts, you'll want to go for this, this plan because it costs less per text. And if you could be spending less than 300 texts, then you'll want this plan because it's cheaper at the beginning. All right, here's another one. It says, your local computer store is having a terrific sale on digital cameras. After a 40% price reduction, you purchase a digital camera for $276. What was the camera's price before the reduction? So it says, let X represent one of the unknown quantities. So uh, it's we're going to let X represent what it's asking. What was the camera's price before the reduction? So the original price of the digital camera. Uh, there is no other unknown quantities. I'm not sure why they have that. So the next part is writing the equation. So when you have a 40% reduction, what they're showing is, is if X is the original price, then our equation would be the original price minus the 40% reduction. And to take 40% of a number, you just take that 0.40, or sorry, 40% and convert it to a decimal, which is 0.40 and times that by the, the value. So if we have the original value minus 40% of that value, that gives us the sale price of 276. So it says solve the equation and answer the question. So we have x minus 0.4x and they give 0.6x. How does that happen? Well, when you have an x by itself, it's just 1x, 1x. So 1, 1x minus 0.4x, it's like 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6. So that's how they get the 0.6. In other words, we're paying 60% of the original price. So 60% of the original price times 276. Um, is the error again here. I'm sorry about that, but it should be. Let me fix that too. Okay, there we go. It's fixed. So when we have 0.6, we divide by 0.6. And 276 divided by 0.6 gives us 460. So the original price was 460. So to double check, let's just make sure that if we take 40% of 460 and subtract it off, that we get 276. So 40% of 460 is going to be 184. That's what they're showing right here, 40% of 460. If we subtract that from 460, we get 276, which is the correct answer. All right, I'm also going to uh, look at a couple um, examples from homework just to show you a couple more examples. So this one says, in 2005, there were 16,700 college students or students at College A with a projected enrollment increase of 1,250 students per year. In the same year, there were 35,950 students at College B with a projected enrollment decline of 500 students per year. According to these projections, when will the colleges have the same enrollment? What will the enrollment be at the college each at, at that time? So I'm going to let X be the number of years after 2005 and that will tell me the number of years after 2005 that 
they have the same enrollment. So I'm going to look at College A first. They start with 16,700 students and they're increasing 1,250 students per year. So that would be the equation of, let me make sure the numbers are right, 16,700. 16,700 is the base. Ooh, let me zoom in here. Okay, 16,700 is the base enrollment plus 1,250 times the number of years because it's going up 1,250 per year. We want to know when that's equal to the other school, which has 35,950 35, students, but they're losing 500 students per year. So I'm going to subtract off 500 times X. And I want to know when, how, after how many years will they be equal? X represents the number of years after 2005. So the first step I'm going to do is add 500X to this equation or to, sorry, to both sides, so that I move the x over to this side. So that should give me uh, 16,700 plus, so 1250 plus 500 is 1750 times x. That should equal 35,950. Then the next step I'm going to do is subtract the 16,700 from both sides. So that should give me 1750 times x equals, should give me 19,250. Then to solve for the equation, I divide both sides by 1750. So if I take, so x will be 19,250 divided by 1750. That would give me x equal to 17, 50, 11 years. So now this wants to know in the year. So it'll be 11 years after 2005. So I'm going to guess 2016, 11 years. And that did not take my answer. I'm not sure why, but that's how you do it. So that's pretty much how you work these equations. You set x usually equal to the thing that they're asking, build up the expressions and the equations, and then solve on both sides. Good luck. We'll see you next time.